Hello and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host and city manager, Doug Bartosh. And we're here today with uh, Morgan Scott, who's our uh, development services manager. Okay. And uh, he is kind of uh, involved in a lot of our projects around the city. And so I try to get him in here every now and then just to get uh, give everybody an update on uh, what's going on in the city in terms of projects and what's planned in the future um, for projects. So. Um, the big one, just not too long ago that we finished, was obviously uh, 12th Street. Yep. That, that took us a long time to get done and had to be broken into two sections, but I think people really appreciate um, where that's out right now and looking yep. pretty good. And our next big street project is, is Mingus Avenue from Willard all the way down to Maine, actually. So yep. you want to talk a little bit about that? when? where you're at right now, when's it starting, and those kind of things. Absolutely, and real quick, back to 12th Street, not only we got a lot of compliments on that, but you'll, if you drive it right now, you'll probably notice we're going back and we're sealing that That's asphalt, right. and we're trying to make sure that we're gonna take good care of these brand new streets we're building so we get the biggest length, lifetime length out of these streets, out of this brand new capital. So if you drive down 12th Street today, you'll see uh, <laughs> it's just been sealed, and we'd like to start doing that with a lot of our new yeah. asphalt. People on 12th Street are probably going, oh, no, no more construction. Yeah. But but it's true. we got to keep it keep it in good shape. Yep. So, so and, it, it, and we'll be in and out in less than a week and a half with those. The seal projects go pretty quick. Okay. But, yes, the next project is Mingus from, like you said, ultimately Willard to Maine. Again, we're going to be dividing that into two projects. And I know everybody keeps saying, why are you dividing into two projects? Why don't we just get this done? Why don't we just get it done and out of the way? And we agree. We'd, we'd love to do that we're actually getting federal money. And when you get federal money, that comes with a lot of strings attached. It actually gets a lot more expensive. I've heard some estimates, sometimes 30% more expensive. So we don't want to do the whole project with federal money. We want to break it down into a small chunk. So we'll actually do it from Willard to, it's, uh, we refer to it as the 8th Street Alignment or the 8th Street Wash. Yeah, some people might know it. it's right between the Aspen Ridge Apartments and the Casa del Sol. Make sure I get that name right. Casa del Sol Condominiums. So that's probably about where the break line will be. We'll do that project. Um, over the course of the next year. And then following right after that, we'll jump into the 8th, to Main, 8th Street to Main Street project. And that'll be all federal money. In fact, we're negotiating with a designer right now. SEC is a local firm that we are in negotiations with. And hopefully we'll bring that to council maybe in June to get the design on that project started. So when you say this year, um, are you talking uh, budget year? Because I think we were talking about uh, probably actually getting down to paving sometime next spring for the first section of 12th Street? You're correct, so not this budget year, so the, so next budget year. Okay. You know, we could start on at the end of this calendar year. Right. Yes, you're correct. Okay. Yeah, we always get confused between budget years, which go from July to June versus calendar years, and so um, we get a little confused there. So, but anyway, we'll eventually have a new street, essentially from all the way on the farthest west side of Mingus, all the way down to 89A, uh, again on the uh, east side. So yep. that'll be a nice improvement. Bike lanes, sidewalks, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be working very closely with our businesses in that area to make sure that uh, that uh, there's in, they're impacted as little as possible, although they're going to obviously be impacted to some extent. And, and on that note, one of the things we've done with our businesses, we're going to allow them to do additional signage a little bit beyond the zoning ordinance. So staff might actually be going to the council if need to, to let those businesses put up the additional signage to let everybody know they're open for right. business. So um, we'll just kind of run down the list here. Um, kind of a small project, but important for people that live in the area of Cottonwood Street uh, next to Safeway there. We're looking at sidewalks. Um, I know we're getting close to getting, uh, I think, the right-of-way on that. And Yes, that is another federal project. Actually, i got to hand it to Bruce Morrow. He went out. He's our transit director. He went out and got a state grant. It's actually federal money through the state uh, for that sidewalk and uh, handicap access and uh, new bus stops. So the bus stops are there today, but there's not an actual shelter. Right. So now we'll have shelter. We'll have sidewalks. Um, but, yes, we are waiting right now on a few easements. As soon as we get those easements wrapped up, we can get that project out to bid. But that project's actually designed, and as far as the design goes, is ready to go. This is, uh, like you said, Doug, in front of Safeway. So Cove Parkway, the north side of Cove Parkway, right, right along Sawmill Gardens. I, no, 
Sawmill Cove. So, yeah, right. I believe is the name of the subdivision. So from 89A to not quite to Cove Parkway. So will it be sidewalks on both sides or just one side? Mostly just the north side. North side. There okay. is a small segment on the south side. Uh, we ran out of, the grant didn't cover enough to do the entire both sides. So we will do a bus shelter with a small segment of sidewalk to a crosswalk. That way there will be handicap access okay. to, to the sidewalk infrastructure. Okay. And what is that, how much is that project? Probably around $80,000. Okay. And the uh, Mingus in total, I think we're looking three, four million on that? That's correct. The okay. total project, Willard Domain, about three, three and a half. Okay. Yep. So you can see how expensive these streets are to go in and completely re replace them and make sure the sidewalks are, are uh, appropriate and on and on. Yes, it's very expensive very quickly. Um, the other thing that um, uh, I know is coming up is, uh, in fact, we're working on right now, and you guys are involved in this from kind of an inspection project management standpoint, and that's the Riverfront Water Reclamation Plant. That's correct. Um, quite, a, quite a project. Yes. Uh, in fact, our new engineer, Robert Winicky, uh, he hasn't gotten out in front of the public a lot lately because he came in and he jumped on this riverfront project right away. And he's kind of been taking it at least since the construction phase. So he's project manager for that. Um, if you haven't been down there, we, we are giving tours occasionally to a few different people who are, who are interested. Uh, but they've built the the concrete basins, at least the majority of the large ones, they're pouring to a few concrete pours, uh, but they're starting to get ready to do the building for the next couple months, and, and the actual operation portions, they go into the treatment of the wastewater. Yeah, if you, you know, and the best place to look at it is at the uh, rough cut parking lot there. If you go all the way in yep. and look back, you can you can see it pretty clearly back there what they've been, what they've done so far. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're just about ready for our first break. So let's go ahead and take our first break and then we'll come back and talk uh, some more projects. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the ring cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tight. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh. And I'm here with Morgan Scott, who uh, manages all our public works projects. And uh, we're kind of just going down the list here to give everybody an idea of what's going on in Cottonwood in terms of projects and uh, what the status of those projects are. Um, one of the things that uh, we've been working on for a while now is a citywide drainage study. Mm -hmm. Explain what that is and why that's important for us. Absolutely. In fact, a few people uh, a few people get shocked when they saw the sticker price. It's it's a four hundred thousand dollars study that actually doesn't come out of the city of Cottonwood. That's a it's a grant that the city received from a flood control district. Now our citizens do pay into the flood control district, but our flood control district routinely puts majority of that money right back into Cottonwood, be it projects or studies. So what this study is going to do is it's going to study every drainage way, every wash, every storm drain culvert within the city of Cottonwood. That's not only going to help us from a development point of view, making sure that development maintains all those washes, and everything else maintains to make sure we're not flooding people out. But a big, what, what the general public's going to see coming out of this 
is a priority list of flood and drainage projects that we may want to move forward with in the near future. And, and, what, and there will be a large public process, probably two or three public meetings, um, some of those with the city council, in which we'll kind of prioritize some of our projects. And then in future years, we can go to the flood control district and say, hey, this is, this is what the community mm -hmm. wants to move forward with. I know one of the big projects that keeps getting brought up again and again is the Old Town oh, floodplain yeah. study. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we have now businesses that have been included in the floodplain, which mm -hmm. has, has really kind of hurt them financially because you got to pay for flood insurance then, which can get pretty pricey. And then redevelopment. Not only flood insurance is pricey, redeveloping. So anybody who wants to come in and pour money into our downtown district, it makes it even more difficult for them to do that. So this will really encourage people to invest more into our old town district. And again, this is a $400,000 project funded through the Yavapai County Flood District, which we all pay into through our uh, property tax. That's correct. And uh, this is a great use of that money. And again, it'll give us a roadmap on what we need to do. And this is really an important issue mm -hmm. in this area because uh, with our hillsides that eventually run down to the river, some of that water can get going pretty quickly. And uh, if we get a lot of rain, uh, you get that much water flowing downhill, you want to make sure that there's a path for it to safely move. Yeah. So, an important study. Mm -hmm. um, another one that I think is probably important to a lot of people mm -hmm. is uh, we're getting ready to uh, build two new rest, uh, park restrooms mm -hmm. and then remodel the uh, softball uh, complex uh, restroom. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about those. Sure, and like you said, Doug, this is probably the one that the public's most excited about. Not, not to say they're not excited about new roads and drainage projects, but this is the one that they're really going to see, and it's really going to uh, revitalize some of our parks quite a bit. Uh, the first one will be Garrison Park, and many of you know there, there's already a uh, a restroom facility at Garrison Park that's an old slump block building, unfortunately just not in the best of condition. So that building is either going to be demoed or remodeled into a storage building, but there will be a brand new restroom facility at Riverfront closer to the Ramadas, uh, state of the art. It'll blend in with the rest of the facilities down at Garrison Park. So that'll really, I think, make that park much, much nicer. We've actually worked with our police department to make sure it's going to be a much safer facility, a much cleaner facility, easier to maintain, easier to keep it up and running. Mm -hmm. We're going to do with some industrial and institutional grade fixtures right. that will be much easier to keep running so our public's going to be able to enjoy it. Many of you have probably noticed Garrison Park when it's shut down occasionally because it gets vandalized. Yeah. So Garrison Park will be the first one. Um, the second one will be Kids Park. It's often referred to as Kids Park. It's the mm -hmm. park in front of the fairgrounds along 12th Street, right. uh, which is actually a city-owned park. There is no restrooms there today, and there's a lot of large events, everything yeah. from soccer tournaments to, to Fourth of July to other events that go on in that area. And every time you've probably seen lines of porta johns for yeah. all those events. So we're actually going to do a, a little bit larger restroom facility. They'll look very much the same from the outside. The kids park facility will be a tad larger. Uh, one of the other benefits at both facilities will be brand new drinking fountains, which we've had trouble again due to vandalism keeping drinking fountains working in the area. So another major benefit. Yeah. And then the third one is going to be the Riverfront Softball Complex, which I'm sure a lot of our citizens have seen when that gets, again, vandalized and damaged and then is out of order. Mm -hmm. um, so this is it's going to be not only are the walls beefed up, cleaned up, neater, but again, industrial grade facilities that will hopefully uh, be able to last longer. And, so. and you bring up a good point. A lot of these restrooms, unfortunately, a lot of our our park facilities are vandalized and you know it's very expensive to repair um, and it's just senseless mm -hmm. it's uh, unbelievable so help us out if you see somebody out there doing something they shouldn't do and we've tried to design these facilities with that in mind uh, to where you know if you can hear somebody in there that's you know, maybe bang it around. I mean, give the police department a call and let them know. They're going to be beautiful facilities, and we'd like to keep them that way. So uh, help us out there. Real quick, Doug, if you don't mind me mentioning, if if, uh, if any of our listeners haven't been down to Riverfront Park lately, our Parks and Rec staff's gone above and beyond, I feel yeah. like, this year, and uh, it, it looks beautiful down there. Not yeah. only is the grass greener, they've done a lot of landscaping, and with the addition of these restrooms, it's going to be a facility I think all of us will be proud of. And, and we're seeing that there's more more and more use, particularly with uh, um, 
softball tournaments, baseball tournaments coming into the area yep. that bring in uh, 20, 24 teams, 30 teams, and uh, that's great for our economy, great, great for our, you know, sports-minded community. So yep. another big one that uh, I know we've been working on for a long time is the Civic Center HVAC project, and, yep. and that, that project has actually expanded into a... Uh, another grant opportunity so we're going to see some real improvements yep. at that old building that uh, again if you haven't seen it it's the big rock building in old town built in 1939 by uh, through the WPA program uh, it really is a centerpiece of the history of Cottonwood so mm -hmm. this is really a, a great project a lot of people are excited about this one because as you mentioned the the Civic Center is definitely a Cottonwood landmark it's what yeah. a lot of people kind of associate Old Town with uh, and a lot of us have been in the Civic Center in summertime when it is unfortunately not a pleasant experience uh, especially when it's uh, it, it was just used to be humidifiers I'm sorry not humidifiers uh, swamp coolers and it wasn't very pleasant especially come monsoon season so council budgeted to have that revamped with uh, HVAC which everybody was really excited about we are actually done with the HVAC plans but at the same time we got another grant from the community development block grant to revitalize the whole building bring, right. bring it up to kind of its historic condition and so now we have an opportunity to make sure before we go out with this HVAC project to make sure that's going to align with the historic uh, architecture character of the building so w although the HVAC is ready to go we're going to hold off on that for a little bit longer on until the architects have a chance to review those plans. And this is really an important project. We want to make sure we get it done right. And you can imagine some of the challenges of uh, putting an HVA system in a uh, 1939 building that never had it. So, yep. But you want to maintain as much of that historical look as possible. So uh, the, the hope is to make it more user friendly but restore it as much as possible to its uh, original state. Mm -hmm. So that'll, that'll be a good, good program. Um, right now, uh, we're doing a lot of, uh, as you said, on 12th Street, street seals. Yep. And uh, actually, there's a lot of other sealing we're doing. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, as a lot of our viewers know, the city's put a quite a bit of money into public parking, especially in our Old Town District, but in other districts as well. And uh, we want to, again, go back and make sure we're taking care of those parking lots so they're not falling apart, they're in decent shape, and they're going to last, and it's not going to be major capital projects in the future. So what we're going through this year is we're actually, we're not using more money, we're taking some of our pavement preservation money that's already set aside for pavement preservation, and on this year, we're going to dedicate that towards public parking lots. So that's everything from our riverfront parking lot, the rec center parking lot, uh, Old Town, Garrison, uh, all the parking lots in Old Town. So you'll see all those parking lots over the course of the next two weeks shut down for occasional maintenance. And again, they'll all get some sort of a seal put on them. Uh, we had a little bit of money left over, so we took that and did a few street projects. And these are some of our relatively newer asphalt streets. Uh, 12th Street, we already discussed. Mingus Avenue from mm -hmm. 89A to Willard, Willard the, the roundabout out to the uh, Maverick area. In fact, actually going all the way up to the west city limits. Oh, We're going to take that. Yep, all the way up. A few other neighborhoods, we uh, we crack sealed the Mesquite, make sure I get this right, Mesquite, Mesquite Springs. Springs. Yep, we crack sealed Mesquite Springs. We will fog seal and crack seal Crestview, which mm. it's needs it. We crack sealed 10th Street and the park, so we, we were able to take that money and actually stretch it. Yeah, we and definitely got a lot of a lot of uh, return on that on that investment, yep. and and of course part of that too is the cost of oil is down and mm -hmm. and uh, that certainly helps in terms of the pricing as well. So that was a good project. Um, let me see what else we've got here. Uh, airport apron. That's a big yeah. project. Yep, and uh, a lot of our airport users are excited about that because unfortunately our apron has been coming apart lately and, and a lot of them have seen that. We've been sweeping it much more regularly than we used to. So actually just this morning we had a pre-bid meeting with our airport engineers and I think we had about five or six different contracting companies represented there. Bids are due for that project June 1st, so sometime in June we'll probably go into council for award and we could be starting that project mid to late July. Um, unfortunately, we probably won't be able to get the whole apron done in one year. So due to FAA budgeting, we'll probably do about half this year and maybe another half next year. And so this is, again, um, a federal project, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we have to come up with, what, 7% of the cost? It's, a, it's about 5, 5%. 4 point 
Okay. It's something. And yeah. this is uh, what a million. How much is this pro project? This this phase could be somewhere between a million a quarter and a million and a half. Okay. And then the next phase is again another million a quarter, million and a half. Okay. So uh, two and a half to three million dollars for the total project. So that's good. Yeah, and you obviously can see we wouldn't be getting a lot done if we couldn't capture federal grants or state grants to help us uh, yep. get through on these. Or flood controlled grants. Or, yep. Yeah, so There's well. always something out there that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're also in the middle of uh, street, street striping. Yep. And um, that'll be continuing. And I think they've done uh, all the long lines. Now they've got to go back and do the crosswalks and and uh, all the other markings that uh, we have out there. Yep. Um, the the other one, uh, this HSIP sign grant, talk right. about that a little bit. Absolutely, that was actually a couple years ago. Uh, the federal government came up with a, a grant that got distributed out to again to the states to the subregions and it came down to us and and it was kind of one of those fast things where you've got to move on it pretty quickly so the the whole region the Verde Valley and this includes multiple different communities they all got together and they decided actually it was a good community regional project we decided rather than fight over it and split it and everybody gets small chunks to do capital projects that we we lose a lot in design and bacon davis wages and environmental fees and everything else instead we decided to do was let's go through and let's let's upgrade all of our enforceable signs our our regular what we call a regulatory stop mm -hmm. sign this would be speed limit signs stop signs uh street name signs in fact you may have noticed that we've gotten a lot of questions um all the street name signs throughout town have changed. It used to be a four inch letter on a six inch blade. Now mm -hmm. you drive around town, they're a lot more visible. It's actually a six inch letter on a nine inch blade. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a bit bigger, yeah. and that was all paid for out of a, out of a grant, the federal money through the state. That, and that really helps us older guys that uh, can't see too well anymore, so. And our firemen. <laughs> and our firemen, and our yep. police officers, it helps them yep. uh, make sure they're on the right street. Um, I think we've pretty much covered the the list here. Mm -hmm. um, hazard mitigation grants, what are those again now? That's actually another grant we're going after. We'll probably be taking this to the council sometime in July uh, to inform them. That's a uh, an application we've been chasing. Uh, many people are familiar, the city did a realignment of the railroad wash floodplain mm -hmm. study a couple years ago mm -hmm. uh, and took approximately 25 properties out of the floodplain. It was, it was a great project. A lot of residences got removed from the floodplain, but two commercial, one, one commercial and one residential uh, condo, uh, or a condo complex got left within the floodplain because those ones actually needed construction to go with it. So we're going after a grant to have both of those removed. It's actually, I'll take that back, we're going after two grants from two separate projects. We were advised from FEMA that we may stand a better shot treating them separately. Mm -hmm. So we're applying for two separate projects. It's kind of a neat, they, they award 10 projects every year. We were number 17 and number 18, so originally we did not get it. However, quite a few projects have been knocked off, so we're moving up and moving up, and more and more likely looking like we might get that. Okay, um, the, the other thing is, um, um, now I'm trying to remember, did we take a second break? No, we haven't yet. <laughs> we better take a second break. Um, so come back and join us and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in the city. Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh. 
Here with um, Morgan uh, Scott, who's talking about uh, projects we have going on in the city. I think we've covered most of the projects that the city's doing, mm -hmm. but there's a whole lot going on in terms of private development that I know you guys are involved in, mostly from an inspection process. So. Um, kind of give us an update on, on what's going on around the city. Absolutely, Doug. Uh, I know one of the complaints since the recession is, you know, we've got all these subdivisions sitting empty and what are we going to do with them? Uh, many people may have noticed a lot of those are starting to fill out. Mesquite, make sure I get this right again, Mesquite Hills, which is the subdivision probably to the furthest west of the city near Cottonwood Ranch, is starting to fill up. At least it's phase one right. is beginning to fill out. So they've actually already completed the infrastructure for phase two, and I think they've got two or three houses under construction there. Mm -hmm. So moving forward with that, uh, Gray Fox Ridge is another subdivision on the north end of town, north of our Old Town District, which is um, filling in. I think they've got a few vacant lots left, but uh, Kindra Heights is also developing. We've got several right. of those subdivisions that were kind of all started pre-recession that are starting to fill out. Because that started to happen, we're getting more and more interest for more subdivisions. Uh, many of our viewers have probably heard of the two large ones that have approached us. One's called Vineyards at Cottonwood, right. which again, they're trying to push that vineyard theme really uh, bring more and more of that to Cottonwood and to, and to the Old Town District. They're really excited to connect to Old Town. Right. Now they are actually going to be located near the Grosetta Ranch Road roundabout uh, on 89A, headed to Clarkdale near the, make sure I get this right, not Pine Shadows, on the Greens development. Mm -hmm. But they want to, as part of their development, connect Grosetta Ranch Road through to Old Town, I'm sorry, through to Main Street, also to Old Town, which will not only give them walking ability to Old Town, which is going to be a big marketing theme for what they right. want to push. It'll also, from our residential point of view, give us a bypass to our Old Town District, which I know is becoming more and more of a... Yeah, a uh, busy area. Yes. Yeah, and it seems like, uh, and again, with Grosetta Ranch Road, it'll, it'll be the sidewalks, bike lanes, trails, whatever. Yep. Um, but it'll be a you know, multi-use uh, uh, transportation quarter for us, which will be really nice as well. Mm -hmm. So, and then the the next one is 89 and uh, Vine, yep. which is uh, out at uh, 89A and Cornville Road, which is a huge development, uh, about 2,000 homes and um, 100 acres of commercial, and that seems to be moving along fairly well as also. So, um, you know, the other thing, and, and we've got about a minute left here, um, the other thing that mm -hmm. I should ask you about that I know our viewers would probably be very interested in is uh, Highway 260 and the improvements there. Yep. I uh, actually just had a meeting with ADOT yesterday as well as Camp Verde, the county, Clarkdale, Sedona, many of uh, the other municipalities in our region uh, to talk about State Route 260. Uh, they are nearly complete on design. Obviously, they're running the budget cuts, and when they get towards budget cuts, they're looking at, okay, what can they take out? One of the items that unfortunately got taken out of that project was a, a multi-use trail. However, uh, they came up with a good idea, and they'll, they'll actually build the base <coughs> for that trail along with the project. What, and a lot of people say, well, what good is that? That actually makes it very inexpensive to go back and build it later because the base is there, all we're doing is hard surfacing. So I know a lot of our viewers had an interest in seeing that happen. Um, we're actually chasing the potential of finding some funds to get that done with the project. We can't make any promises yet. And when you, you say go back and put on the hard surface, we're essentially talking asphalt? Asphalt or concrete. Sometimes multi-use trails will go both ways, but okay. we'll consider one or the other. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, and this is the project from Thousand Trails south of Cottonwood all the way out to I-17. So right. this project will make State Route 260 four lanes coming into Cottonwood. Uh, not only much easier to get into Cottonwood, one of the most exciting parts from an economic point of view is after that project's done, ADOT will now sign everything on I-17 going into Sedona through State Route 260. Very exciting opportunity for Cottonwood. Okay, I think that just about covers it for, mm -hmm. for now. Pretty exhaustive list. Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Mm -hmm. uh, you're curious about something that uh, you see going on in the city, we're really pleased to answer your questions. So call City Hall, call uh, Morgan up at mm -hmm. Public Works, and uh, let us know what you, what, you, what you need to know, and what your question is. More importantly, come back again and join us on Inside Cottonwood.